In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the Book of Daniel. And just to get you caught up on where we are, because we've been doing a series on Daniel for a while now, you may recall that the other day that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and Daniel went to interpret that dream, but Daniel's a little afraid because he knows the king is not going to like his answer. Well, here we finally have the translation of that dream in Daniel chapter 4, verses 30 through 33. And here it says, uh, this is sort of the fulfillment of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, because you remember what we talked about the other day, is that Nebuchadnezzar's dream was that he was this big tree, and that tree was going to be cut down, and the tree was Nebuchadnezzar, and that's how Daniel interpreted it. Well, unfortunately, he didn't repent of his sin, and this did come to pass in Daniel 4, 30 through 33. The king reflected and said, Is this not Babylon the Great, which I have myself built as a royal residence by the might of my power and for the glory of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, a voice came from heaven, saying, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared sovereignty has been removed from you and you will be driven away from mankind, and your dwelling place will be with the beast of the field. You will be given grass to eat like cattle, and seven periods of time will pass over you until you recognize that the Most High is ruler over the realm of mankind, and bestows it on whomever he wishes. Immediately the word concerning Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled, and he was driven away from mankind and began eating grass like cattle, and his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until the hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. It's a really sad thing, but pride is one of the most deadly sins that mankind faces. Honestly, it's the one that I feel that I struggle with the most. I remember that C.S. Lewis wrote one time, and he was involved in several correspondence with several different people, and luckily we have a lot of those letters preserved. C.S. Lewis was talking to somebody that was struggling with the sin, and he was struggling with the sin of lust. And C.S. Lewis talked about his own struggles with the sin of pride. And he said, if I had to choose between the two, I would much rather have your struggle than mine. And the reason is, pride is the deadliest of all sins. Keep in mind that it is the reason that the devil became the devil. It was his arrogance and his desire to be like God and to be higher than God that led him down the path of rebellion. And Lewis is not wrong in that. I don't know if it's really the greatest of all sins or anything like that, but I do know it's one that I personally struggle with, and it's one that Nebuchadnezzar really struggled with in this passage. You see, a godly man looks around and sees all creation, even things built by human hands, and remembers that at its origin is God. God not only provided, for example, if we were to look around this room, the wood and the raw materials to build this, but he also instilled the builders with wisdom and craftsmanship. All their talents, all the genius of mankind originates from God. And so looking at any marvel, even one that's man-made, even one that was a great nation like Babylon, a humble man, and a man that thinks, th thinks of things the way that God thinks of things, looks at the world through heaven's eyes, realizes that everything ultimately is God's creation, and that he ought to be given glory for all of it. See, if Nebuchadnezzar had just changed his perspective a little bit, if all he had done is look around his great nation and the wealth that he had amassed, and said, wow, God has blessed me so much. God has done so much good for me. Look at all these amazing things that God has done. Look at how he has blessed me and blessed my kingdom and kept us safe and given us wealth. And look at the technology we've been able to develop. You see, he could have still marveled in all of the things that he was marveling at. All he had to do 
was put the emphasis on God and show a little bit of gratitude, and he would have been just fine. But unfortunately, he didn't. Unfortunately, he focused inwardly. Unfortunately, he thought that it was really a testament to him how great his nation was. And God, in his own way, decided to correct that error. And the way that he did it is to humble him more than Nebuchadnezzar had ever been humbled in his life. And the reason that he did so is so that he would have an appreciation for God and for the things that he has done for him. And you'll notice the language in the last part of that verse. That it talks about how everything under the sun is really to God's glory, not, not man's. You see, I think the reason that the punishment fits the crime here is because Nebuchadnezzar essentially got to experience life what it would be like in a completely godless state. Now, follow me on this. Even though animals, of course, are God's creation as well, they do not have a soul and they do not have that, that spark of the divine. They're not made in the image of God the way mankind is. So what happens to Nebuchadnezzar? He becomes like a beast. He essentially begins to live life like an animal. He gets to experience what life would be like without God, and sadly, what he would be like without God. Because our ability to reason and speak and to acquire knowledge and apply that knowledge in a certain way, to learn from our mistakes, to do self-reflection, all of those things are aspects that God has and that he imparts with us as a blessing. And without those things... We're just animals. Without God, without that spark of the divine living inside of us, we would all be just as feral and cruel and really ordinary as any animal would be. Just gathering food wherever we can, never thinking past really the next minute, and living based off of our own primal instincts. You see, God had to show Nebuchadnezzar in a very real way what life without God is really like. And if we want to live a godly life, we have to look at the world through heaven's eyes and acknowledge God's glory and show some gratitude for the things that he's given to us. Because without him, really, even if we look like people and talk like people and act like people, at the end of the day, without God, we're really just beasts of the field. We owe everything to him. Stay the course, friends. Hey, I hope you get all the updates. You need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell hey, down make there. Make sure you get all the updates. That you gets need you to go a notification and every that time I post a new Bible down lesson there. or political that commentary. That gets you a notification now, every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus. But I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.